Do you have plans to visit the Philippines? And you want to know the latest travel updates and some answers to some questions regarding travel requirements? Watch this video and find out! Hi everyone and welcome to my channel. This is Jamie Iris and this is Jamie Iris Talk TV where we discuss uh, topics about uh, travel requirements, travel updates, uh, going back to the Philippines. Are you a foreign national who has a long-term or existing visa and you would like to know how you can travel back to the Philippines? Or if you're a foreign tourist and you're planning to travel to the Philippines either for the first time or maybe uh, to travel back again and you want to know is it something that is allowed already Jamie uh, in the Philippines? So that's something that we will answer also in this uh, channel. So this channel brings you travel updates, answers to travel related questions and at the same time other information or questions, uh, answers to the questions that usually our viewers ask uh, that they need further cl clarification since the protocols usually changes from time to time so fast so sometimes some of our viewers gets confused so i'm here to help out to bring down or lower down a bit of the stress of travelers who actually would want to travel back to the philippines oh by the way if you are a filipino and you are watching uh, this uh, episode and you might be wondering why is this in english hi fellow kabayans or filipinos if you want the Tagalog version or Tagalog videos that I'm preparing for all of you, we still have that. Uh, this video is in English as simply because I would want to help uh, foreign nationals who would like to travel back to the Philippines to answer their questions and give them an update as well. But if you prefer Tagalog, you can visit my other, uh, my channel for the rest of the many videos that we have in Tagalog. So let us just take a look at some of the questions that you have left and I will answer as well so that you'll get to know the response and you can prepare for your travel. And if you have some questions that you left in my comment box and it's not answered in this video, please take a look at the comment box because usually I answer uh, your questions and I type it there so that you can get the response as fast as I can actually answer. And then if the answer is still not there in your comment box, please take a look also so in, for my other videos, uh, maybe uh, there might be some answers that I have given to some of our viewers that might also be helpful for you, that can help you when it comes to your concerns regarding the, your travel back to the Philippines. But then again, uh, everyone's so looking forward that at least whatever we will be providing here uh, will definitely be helpful to you. And of course, with that, I simply want to say, if this is your first time to watch uh, this video or a video from my channel, I want to invite you to please subscribe to my channel so that you'll get updated with our recent uh, travel updates about the Philippines and what's happening over here in the Philippines. And at the same time, for our viewers who are consistently watching our channel, thank you so much because I really appreciate that uh, you are supporting and watching the channel and thank you so much for the positive feedback. Speaking of that, let me just say thank you too to this following of viewers of our channel from gloria kisido suzuki nice thank you from joy wegger from germany she said hi miss jamie good day the best ever million thanks for for your channel it helps more to everyone and at the same time god bless more and stay safe from mary mary jane she said much offense miss jamie keep safe for always uh thank you so much uh gloria joy and mary mary jane you are almost welcome i am simply so happy to help one uh, each one of you and at the same time all of our viewers who are watching us and god bless you and see you in um the episodes of my uh, channel and at the same time of course for this video too now uh let us just answer some questions from ramon tirona miss jamie one question the 72 hours testing prior to departure does the time start when you had taken the test or when you receive the result because like here in the u.s some fit leaves in the morning and add one day to the arrival and if you fly at night it add two days and the result you don't always get it within one day so you can clarify this issue uh for ramon ramon from january 16 to uh 31 
2022, uh, we had some updates from the IATF. So they changed the arrival protocol from 72 hours, within 72 hours before your flight, it now changed to 48 hours, uh, within 48 hours before your flight. So it means that... Uh, when it comes to the counting, Ramon, so the counting for the swap test actually starts uh, when you get swap tested, not when the result is out. So uh, that usually, and you have to take into consideration, you have to count from the departure date from the airport that you will be departing from. Uh, what, am, what do I mean? Uh, usually in the U.S., uh, sometimes you have to take the local or regional flight rate. So uh, the swap testing should usually happen or the counting should be you will base it not on the first flight domestically but you have to base it from your international flight going to the philippines like for example if you will have first your regional flight before your uh for example before your flight uh, from the san francisco airport to the philippines or to manila then therefore the counting of the 48 hours should be from the time of your departure from san francisco to manila and not other local flights that you might have going to San Francisco. So uh, that is how we actually count it. And again, uh, when we talk about this RT-PCR test, it's different from the one half pass that we usually count the arrival days. So we usually only count the actual uh, time of departure, the number of hours from the time of departure, and you don't need to count the time of uh, traveling as well. So for example, uh, you will be departing uh, from the San Francisco airport, uh, let us just say January 30. So 48 hours from that time of departure, let us say, just say January 30, uh, 10 uh, a.m. So you will have to get your swap test result at least two days or 48 hours uh, from uh, that day. So it's hour sensitive. So that will be January 30. So January 29, 28. So January 28, San Francisco time. Okay. San Francisco time. Uh, you have to count 48 hours. So it means uh, that let us just say uh, January 28. 10 a.m. San Francisco time, that can be the start that you can actually get your swap test result. Uh, give a little bit of allowance, maybe a one hour or two to three before you actually take it, just in case there's a delay from uh, with the flight that you will be having. So if you have that and uh, looking forward that the result will be released within uh, that time period before your actual uh, flight. So that is how we do the counting. Although I did here, uh, some of our fellow Filipinos or non-OFWs who's having sometimes a little bit of challenge regarding that because some swap, uh, some of the swap testing uh, laboratories back there uh, seems not able to really release uh, the swap test result uh, less than 48 hours. So I do hope that you can find a lab that will do so that at least you could have it expedited and you can get the result in time for your flight. So if you have further questions from one about that, uh, please uh, let me know. And from Arman Rivera, he said, I just finished registering uh, for the one half pass. I got my QR code, but I was not required to upload my vaccine certificate, negative PCR test or anything. Uh, that will be fine, Arman, simply because they just recently changed again the string Mary. Last December, when we had that from the uh, one half pass system, uh, they were still, I mean, the traveler are still uh, required to upload what we call those documents. However, uh, come January, one has passed, lo and behold, they again changed uh, their system and they now removed what we call the upload button for the this, uh, documents. Uh, the possible reason uh, could be they kept encountering, I mean, the users the travelers who were asked to upload this document last December kept having problems, even if they were actually following the instructions to have all the documents in JPEG form. So I, I actually am quite happy that they changed it and they removed it 
Why? Uh, simply because it's less hassle for you as a traveler. All you simply have to do now is bring all those documents with you as much as possible in hard copy, like the vaccination certificate and the negative RT-PCR results so that you can easily present it to the immigration or any airport personnel who will ask that from you. And that's easier. Rather than trying to upload in the system keeps giving you error, that's really a nightmare and a headache. And that is what our travelers experienced last December. So when they change it this January, so actually uh, that is quite better but a good thing that you asked so you're quite good you're okay uh, because that is actually the new system that we have for the one half pass and everyone uh, for our foreign nationals uh, please just keep your, uh, yourself updated with this online registration form that we now use um, locally and for everyone else who will be traveling uh, whether you're a foreigner uh, Filipino so if you will be traveling back to the Philippines uh, this is the online registration form that you are required to complete now this keeps on changing when i say changing really changing sometimes it changes two times in a month so uh just simply keep yourself updated uh from my channel because whenever it changes i keep you informed because i always play in the, uh, you know i always uh take a look uh, observe uh, check it so that at least i could give you updates if there are changes so um that's what we call the one half pass I have a separate video for that and I'll be creating a video solely in English uh, that will be helpful for all of you. From Lolita Taladua, hello, Mom Jenny. I am planning to go to the Philippines on the last week of May 2022. What are the protocols aside from the hotel quarantine as soon as I arrive? I am from San Pedro, Laguna. What is the nearest hotel accredited near my home? Uh, my hometown. Uh, thank you very much. I am already fully vaccinated and had my booster already. Hi, Lolita. So I'm simply so excited for you because I know maybe it has been quite some time since you last got back to the Philippines. So May 22. At this point in time, protocols do change. Uh, do change of every 15th and until the 30th so what I advise you to do is keep on checking, especially like a month or weeks before uh, May 2022, when it's the time for you to depart for the Philippines. But for the meantime, let me give you an overview of what we have right now. It might be similar, okay, when we reach uh, May, but again, who knows, they change uh, the protocols at time to time. So, uh, okay, you're correct. So hotel quarantine is very important. So swap testing also, it's very important. If the country that you're coming from is from the green list, from January 16 to 31, automatically, if you're fully vaccinated, you can go home straight to your house and you can just simply do home quarantine for seven days that is only for now january 16 to 31 let's see and hope it will retain for the rest of the coming months especially now that the covid cases are now slowly going uh down or descending so let's see and then uh what else so aside from that you have to complete what we call the one half pass this is the online registration form that every traveler going back or going to the philippines will have to complete and then just like what you've said so the hotel quarantine you have to pay for the swap testing and this there is what we call the trace app t-r-a-z-e so this is the trace app so uh you could also download the app from uh your phone and complete as a registration so far those are the requirements plus of course you have to bring the vaccination certificate as well as the for, uh, negative RT-PCR test result taken within 48 hours before your flight. Again, the protocols are applicable for now. Uh, but then again, just check if this will be the same before May 2022. Thank you, Lolita. And for Orlando Carrion, let everyone repent and accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior for everyone's sin and fall short of the glory of God for, way, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is everlasting life through Christ Jesus our Lord. Thank you so much, uh, Orlando, for sharing that indeed, you know, uh, having Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior uh, definitely is one of the blessed and great gifts that we could receive in our life. God bless you and may God bless also all of our viewers.
And from BB, uh, okay, BB said, hello, ma'am, please, how much extra, how much is the extra baggage allowance of 5 kg in AED currency to Lagos, Muritala, Nigeria, thanks. So it means that you'll be coming from the UAE, am I correct, BB? And you want to know how much will it cost for Lagos? So this is the cost. So Martin Gilliam said, come on, there's a lot of Filipinos here in Canada that wants to go home to the Philippines. Okay, so Martin, is this uh, about uh, Canada being included in the red list country? Yes, I was so surprised also regarding that one. Um, but then again, looking forward by February, uh, Canada will be off the red list. And looking at the brighter side, even if uh, Canada is in the red list, at least they were not as strict as last uh, few months and past few weeks regarding red list countries at least now they are not giving a travel ban uh travelers can still go back but the only thing is the quarantine period is a bit longer than uh, the others so let's see uh by february hoping uh canada and the rest of the countries will be off the red list and only few or no countries at all will be in the red list from Oscar Ocasio, I have a question. I am an international traveler and I see that many of the lines on the form do not have to be filled out because it does not apply to me. It can be left blank or not. If it's, okay, if it's uh, the one half pass that you are talking about, if it has red asterisk, then therefore you have to complete it. So if it does not apply to you, just uh, place N A uh, N then slash A or not applicable then that will be fine. Uh, from Cesar Sarmiento, hi, Miss Jamie. Hope you're well at your end. Question, I'm from the USA, going back to the Philippines mid-February. CDC COVID-18 vaccination. So are you asking if it's accepted? Yes, the CDC COVID vaccination card is accepted in the Philippines. And looking forward and wishing you well for your flight at, in February here in the Philippines. Thank you, Oscar and Cesar. For being RTs, what happened to the cold and or allergic rhinitis we used to know? They changed the name to Omicron so that a citizen will fear it. Bing, that's a great point, actually. I do have allergic rhinitis and I do have a mild asthma as well. Ay, ay. Yes, that's something, you know, uh, that should be taken into consideration too. Well, the only thing, because I was also researching about uh, that, uh, because I usually have allergies. So when I smell something that my system doesn't usually uh, am used to, so tendency, I will have that allergy. So uh, Omicron virus, on the other hand, especially also it's the flu season. So the difference between the two, if it's just like an ordinary cold, or if you can prove it, you have a medical certificate, I think that will be better. At least they can say, hey, this is not actually uh, COVID virus, or this is not Omicron. Uh, what I have read is that Omicron, so I can distinguish also for myself, if ever I have that, you know, sometimes I easily sneeze uh, when I smell something uh, like my allergens. So I have my allergens like strong pain, uh, smoke fumes, so uh, and any strong smell that I'm not quite used to, I usually have that attack. Uh, that asthma or that allergic attack and my eyes will be runny and you know and you know what happens next when you have that allergic rhinitis so uh what usually is the difference between the two is uh they say omicron you will have a very runny nose and while like for example for the seasonal flu it's just simply like cold but it's just like maybe a little sniffles but not really that much so i think you just simply have to weigh it and at least you actually have to know yourself very well if it's something that is more than what you usually feel for rhinitis, uh, allergic rhinitis then uh and something that can be taken a look at but i do agree with you sometimes people get paranoid too you know uh if someone just uh for example, sniffles or sometimes have a cold, but you know, it's just allergy. People will look at you so funny and then they will look at you as if you already have the virus, right? So quite sad. Uh, I mean, uh, this is not something that we actually would want especially for those who have allergies like me uh because it's something that is we don't we didn't also want that allergy but it is what it is and we have them and with all the, uh allergens around us we cannot help but feel that but sometimes because of this uh sometimes blown out of proportion instead of just simply looking out for someone's utmost safety so sometimes people 
do get uh, to be ironed. I hope we will not blow it out of proportion and just look at it as is. Now, from Rachella Maria Tupas, no need to approve the vaccine certificate and RTPs are tasked, just have them ready. Yes, uh, we mentioned that in the other video too, so Rachella is right. So because of the change in the system of the OHP, no need to uh, upload uh, those documents, but you just simply have to bring it with you uh, and have a print copy and show it to the airport personnel who asked that from you. From Cora Bitonga, update po, uh, update about February, domestic uh, flights. Thank you. Cora, so uh, definitely I'll let you know that by February. So at this point in time, what we have is from January 16 to 31, 2022. For Oliza Rosales, uh, that's so unfair for another person or people returning to the Philippines. They always say strict protocols. Why is this happening like this or like that? Okay, so Oliza, um, again, I'm not very sure which protocol are you talking about, uh, but if you meant like generically the protocol, sometimes uh, I, I, I can also understand why people feel that it's unfair and sometimes some people feel it's so strict, but at this point in time, uh, this is what our government had uh, put into place and looking for whether they will listen to your voice, to our voice, that if there's anything that, you know, that is not working for us. And I hope they can be flexible enough to make some adjustments, especially if it's actually not working. Like, for example, uh, I mean, uh, this might not be exactly related to travel, but it's related like to the people in the Philippines that no vaccination, no right policy. So uh, this, that is something that they have implemented. And a lot of people are like, uh, some are agreeing with it, some do not agree with that uh, but uh, some people say that it might violate some, uh, human rights a uh, lot of people also are voicing out their opinions so i see they're quite adjusting it and at the same time uh, listening to the voice of the people so um that's quite good news because sometimes you know people get fed up get upset and at the same time feel just like what you are feeling that it seems unfair but all we have to do is simply voice it out as much as we can so that at least we will be listened to but because if we keep it to ourselves tendency is we might not be listened to at all right because you do, you'll never know a lot of people might also feel the same sentiments and all you need to do is uh, voice it out. Uh, the actions uh, of change might not be so fast, but at least, you know, people are heard and people, you know, can uh, voice things. Like for me, um, to some extent, the no vaccination, no right uh, policy, that's something I am not really fully on board at because, uh, um, again, uh, we could have done it in a better way, uh, just like what I've said, uh, as long as we are not creating that negative connotation about those unvaccinated. I'm vaccinated. I, I have vaccine. Uh, I mean, I am vaccinated. Uh, but then again, I just don't feel okay for people to discriminate people who are not vaccinated because I know and I have talked to a lot of people who are not vaccinated and, you know, they have reasons. And I think respect is very important. Uh, at the same time, we keep each other safe from uh, the virus right so don't blow it out of proportion and at the same time just think and talk about it objectively and let us do our part responsibly i think that's very important right anyway see I, you know it's good to voice out also uh, our uh, points of view so i respect that oliza and looking forward uh, that at least uh, an action can be taken uh, regarding uh, the this protocol so that it will be uh, more friendly to us in terms of the travelers and it will not we will it will not be unfair to anyone who's traveling at this point in time so many so many unnecessary uh, expenses um are incurred and I myself am not happy with that, uh, especially if I will be traveling uh, not as an OFW but as a non-OFW. So uh, I can just simply feel the agony of uh, non-OFWs who will be traveling back in the Philippines. I have a lot of travel plans but at this point in time I have to put it in hold simply because of this unnecessary or extra expenses uh, that uh, is in place uh, simply because of this protocols. But we have to follow what we have to follow and uh, just see how change how how uh, changes will happen in the next few uh, I mean weeks months and voice out what we can voice out if we can 
from Director JK. Why you're so scared of the corona? I had corona two weeks ago. First two days, I was feeling bad. Then from the third day, I was fine. Look at the UK, non-stop letting everyone uh, to have that corona. And finally, even people who haven't... Uh, who have not wanted the vaccine will get antibodies no problem at all well i do agree with uh, director jk uh, again i i have known quite a lot of people who had uh, covid 19 and they became fine after uh, all you simply have to because some were symptomatic some were asymptomatic all we simply have to do is you know be understanding and treat them as people also you know who just needs uh, a understanding too don't treat them as people like uh having plague uh because some people sometimes you know uh say that people who might have covid they feel uh it's life and death uh simply because of what happened in the past well that's true as well and we cannot blame you because that's the experience but uh, what is important is at this point in time if ever you've had covid uh, follow the strict protocol again ensure that you're healthy you take uh, vitamins and supplements so that at least if ever uh, that happens to you your immune system is very strong and it can easily fight off that virus so i wish uh, no and i don't want that too so uh we simply have to be prepared and at the same time vig be vigilant about it Ronnie, Ronnie, why is Malaysia is not on the list? Uh, okay, Ronnie, uh, Malaysia is in the yellow list country. So usually what the IATF uh, release is green list, red list, and all countries, because it's so many that are not included in those two lists, will automatically be considered as yellow list. From Leticia, a call. Hi. Let me just ask, I'm just a bit confused about the 72-hour RT-PCR test before my flight. My flight to the Philippines is on February 15, so 72 hours will be February 12th night. But the big question is, my flight is 9.05 p.m. Do you mean I will take my RT-PCR test 9.05 and above? I, I think all the facilities are closed. Uh, can you give me any suggestions? Thanks, Letty. Hi, Letty. Uh, Letty, since your flight is by February 15, so now January 16 to 31, a uh, possibility of the number of hours required for the swap test result might be the same by February. So what does it mean? It changed already. From 72 hours, it's now 48 hours. So it means that before your actual flight, so you will have to count 48 within your uh, swap test should be taken uh, 48 hours before your actual flight. So what does it mean? Let me just take a look again. So when you said, okay, so your flight, is February 15, right? And then uh, your flight is at 9 uh, 5 p.m. So it means that by 9, so 14, 13. So February 13, 9 5 p.m. Uh, just like what you've said, so above, so or, or onwards after 9, uh, let us just say uh, you can start uh, having the uh, you can start uh, having your swap test taken by 9.30 p.m. onwards, 9.30 p.m., 10, 10 p.m., 11 p.m., or even in the morning. But if you can have it taken by the evening, that's better, as long as it's not earlier than 9.5 because it will be more than 48 hours. Uh, for the Philippines, it's hour sensitive, so they're counting 48 hours. So if you can, if that lab test that you will have your swap test taken can assure you also that you can... Uh, uh, get the result. Okay, the result will be released within 48 hours or just before your flight. Uh, that will be quite great. Okay, because you will need uh, that. So uh, let me know if that's clear for you. So again, if your flight is 9.15, if your flight is February 15, 9 5 p.m., so 9.30 p.m., February 13, uh, February 13, 10 p.m. onwards, okay, 11 p.m., you can have your swap test taken. From Samuel Gakad, good day, Iris. What's the protocol for persons with disability uh, that need immediate treatment upon arrival? I am on dialysis. And is there an exception for long period of quarantine? Hi, Samuel. So regarding this one, if you're a non-OFW, what I suggest is you send a message to the One Health Pass. Uh, they will give you the address of the Bureau of Quarantine Director so that you can actually tell them exactly your situation, especially if you are in need of immediate treatment. 
treatment so they can take a look at uh, like how many days you will stay in the quarantine and at the same time uh, what needs to be done especially if the treatment is urgent so that you are safe and other people also around uh, you will also be safe from uh, any possible transmission of the uh, virus or uh, what quarantine period will they be giving you so this is the email address of the one health pass uh, please email them and they will refer you either to the person who will be talking to so it, it could be uh, the Bureau of uh, Director for Quarantine because that was that is what happened to one of our viewers so she was referred to so same thing uh, like a, a family member has a disability and uh, certain then uh, questions also she had to ask. I had to refer her to one half pass and she was referred to the POQ director. So it might be the same for you, but you have to check. So we'll go through first the one half pass, uh, the generic uh, platform that they have for the email address. And then from there, they will tell you what you need to do. So with that, everyone, I hope uh, the information that I had given to you are very helpful. Should you have some more questions, please let me know. If you find uh, this video uh, informative and helpful, please click like. And at the same time, I'm inviting you to please subscribe to my channel so that you'll get updated with other video updates about travel that I have. And same thing, frequently asked questions videos that I usually uh, create for all of you. So with that, everyone, this is Jamie Iris saying see you in the next video and thank you god bless and stay safe